Okay, this is about Venus and its wave that comes across Venus. This is Roger from Mudfossil University. It goes back a year, year and a half here that they're talking about. It's back in January of 2017. And they're talking, why is this huge rippling wave coming across Venus? Well, I can discuss and tell you exactly why it's happening. This is the wave. Now, Venus is spinning this way. The wave is just stationary and stays in the atmosphere. And they say, well, why is this happening? Well, there's a time. You see the time duration this runs? It says, let's read what it says about it. It says, the bow-shaped features spans the Venusian cloud tops from hemisphere to atmosphere, right across the whole planet. More than 6,200 miles. 6,200 miles long this way. Although the cloud tops whip along at 100 meters a second, 200 miles an hour, much faster than the slow moving surface of the planet below. The planet below is very slow moving compared to the cloud tops. The curious structure seems to stay in a lockstep with the rotation of the planet, suggesting a complex, previously unsuspected interplay between the mountainous surface and the sulfurous cloud tops. It's not between the mountainous surface, it's between an impact of the ether that's impacting into the atmosphere. It's just obvious. I'll show you in a, a, a simulation. I can almost say it's as simple as this. We're being ripped through the galaxy and this is spinning through the ether. The ether is all the particles that are emitted from the sun and from everything. They think that light is nothing in between the sun and the earth and everywhere else that it finally hits with. It is particles and here's what happens. This is what, how that wave position as simple as that this interaction is the exact same reason that the Sun creates radiation the way it does it's a it's the negative particles of everything because every atom is surrounded by negative particles so this entire mass is coated with electrons as it spins through the electrons which are the particles thrown off of luminous bodies they're actually physical particles that are negative this negative mass of atoms that have negative coating rubs through the negative mass of particles that is in the atmosphere of everywhere and in space which is not a vacuum it's not a void it is completely loaded with these tiny 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 particles that are unseen and that is what's crashing into the Venus's atmosphere and it is also crashing into our atmosphere and I believe heating us up a little more than normal because Venus is starting to heat up more than normal and all the planets are starting to get perturbated and also the Sun I believe may be also feeding us a lot more because it's interacting we're all plowing through the same ether and it's all affecting us. So if it's, a, if it's a light ether, we float right through, very little effect. If it's a heavy ether, we go through and it's a lot of effect. And that may be the whole reason for the cyclical um, interactions of the climate on the Earth over so many hundreds and thousands of years or whatever. You get a different climate and then you get a different climate and then it comes back to that climate and it goes back to the other climate. I can't explain that. I'm not certain of that at all. I'm just saying that when we plow through different densities, we're going to have different interactions. Absolutely no question about that. So if the densities change, our response to it will change. It will be either hotter or colder. No question whatsoever. And this is another one here. that what They say explain the coronal heating problem, please. Nobody can explain it. It's one of the biggest mysteries in history, they say. And... Uh, it's just an obvious thing. It's totally obvious. It's the question of why the solar corona is so hot. The corona, way on the outside versus the where you're down in the, the actual surface of the sun. Totally hot out at the very edges and not as hot, way not as hot down at the surface. 6,000 degrees at the surface, millions of degrees at the outer edges of the corona. And that's because it's scrubbing through the ether. That's why. It has nothing to do with... Uh, well, they don't have any idea. They say it's one of the most exciting puzzles the last 60 years. There's no answer. Well, yes, there is. It's obvious. It's ether. And the particles that are thrown from the sun are not nothing. They are particles. 
That's what you're rubbing against. They're negative particles. And I showed that in my research extremely well. Now, this only takes 90 seconds, I, or 60 seconds. I did this about Einstein being wrong about what he's saying. And here's what this is called Einstein proven wrong in under 60 seconds. And here we go. I'm just going to let it play. That's light from a red pulsed laser. This is that same light now being accelerated into an experimental Venturi accelerator. That is the entire particle beam right there. The concussed wave is just like going through the atmosphere with a jet breaking the sound barrier. These little particles here are concussed white ether particles which are in the air and they are ubiquitous everywhere in the universe. This shows light being accelerated. These are the actual particles. Those particles occupy a space. They are virtually unseen until they concuss and they illuminate. That is plasma. That is ether. That is accelerated light. Einstein was wrong. Okay, right. Now, now, I, now I go over some other things, but that covers it. Go to Mud Fossil University. Find out what the real story is. I mean, it's, there's no charge. You go up here. If you don't like it, go away. That's all. But um, there's, there's a lot of problems with what we're being told and being st sold as reality. It's just not real. This is over here as light particles are photoed and they, are, they appear to be little it's square right magnets. You see that? Look at that. Those are the little tiny particles that come out of the accelerator. You see that? Now you see a dark and a light, a dark and a light, and the spikes coming up and down. That means there's two energy levels. It is a positive and a negative, even in light, because that is a light particle. I don't care what you have to say, because that light came through that accelerator. All the same thing, and they're all coming out the same way, and they are particles. So they went in as particles, they came out as particles. They just happened to be a little uh, accelerated now, so we end up seeing them. They're, here's where they come out blistering in chaos. They settle down for two waves, and then they go into this kind of nonsense here, whatever that is. But you see two waves. This happens in green, too. So, oops, I'm getting back here. That's where they come out of the accelerator. Then they come out blurry. Then they turn into particles. You see them as the particles. Then they go do this. It's like a stagecoach slowing down. The wheel on the stagecoach slowing down or something. It happens in green. Same stuff. And here they are again coming out of the accelerator. This is green so they crash a lot further out. But you get the same particles. Two waves and then they go back into something else. They sort of spin down to normal light which is not really visible. You can't see normal light other than just things glow. You don't see it as particles. Only see them as particles here when we accelerated them to, to crash into the negative particles that are everywhere because everything is coated with negative particles. And as this light, as you can see, there's a positive and a negative to this. I can't, nobody can say there isn't. If you see black and white, that doesn't mean either if it was all black or all white, we got one or we got the other. But no, we got two. We got both. I'm saying it's, 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 net negative. There is an excessive amount of negativeness. Not complete negative, it's excessive negatives. That gives it the ability to be pushed with a certain, you know, be repelled and to be attracted and all that business. So, but it's just a very small amount of extra negativeness. And that's the way it works. So go to Mud Fossil University and, um, and learn this because it goes, to, I, I, I'm getting into the isotopes and the very deep part of the uh, nuclear core now because that's also there's no neutrons there can't be any neutrons total neutrons just are, it's impossible and what it's called is electron flooding where all of the electrons flood into the nucleus of the positive particles until they reach e, e, achieve a virtual a neutrality then but they still attract positively so more negatives try to accumulate but now they're being held at a distance away those are the orbitals. Okay, so to wrap this up, all I want to do is say that from the sun, particles are being thrown from the sun and being ripped from the sun as we are being scrubbed through the ether. Those particles are spinning 
towards Earth. They're particles when they left. We know they were something when they left. We know there's something when they impact with here or the space station or whatever they hit. They are obviously something in between here. They're not nothing, as Einstein said. He was totally wrong. So this is the difference. And this entire universe is full of the particles that are emitted from all luminous bodies. That's what, what lumination is. It's particles. Now, that means that we are going to have ether everywhere and the density of the thickness of the ether depends on where we are in the universe and what we are plowing into. All right. Now, and I want to make one last statement. It's not against anybody and I, I have nothing against anybody, but I really, I, I'm just done with being uh, um, continuously attacked for, for showing space and planets and things like this. So it's just common courtesy that if this is not your universe, well, just go into your own universe and talk about your stuff over there because I see this as just a, a point of argument. And I, I so I just remove you and I don't want to do that, but I that's what I'm going to do. So if that's you just want to argue, then I say that, you know, probably be better to go somewhere else because I'm not going to have it, all right? So God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Goodbye.